question, what drew you, is so easy to respond to in hindsight. And in hindsight, everything seems neat and inevitable. But when you're a kid who loves words and loves reading, um, you're usually unencumbered by you know, the th thought of trajectory and where this will all go. Uh, and so it was for me. Um, I kept very early on, you know, at 13, 12, what I called a quote book. And I did this with two other friends, and we collected everything we could, song lyrics and um, poems and overheard conversations and sayings and headlines and movie titles, and, you know, anything that you know, was interesting in language. We stuffed these things uh, full and sent them back and forth to each other by mail. They were actual books. So we would send these things back and copy out uh, what we loved of the other's collections. And it, 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 it really, at that age, is, is a kind of predilection um, and a kind of draw uh, to language in the way, you know, some kids are, are drawn to baseball cards, I, I guess. Um, so, so early on, there was just this desire to collect language and to hold it and to make something with it. Um, I collected little trinkety things, I guess, you know, the way a lot of kids do as well. But somehow those small objects seemed connected to language as well uh, for me. Um, yes, I, I write essays. I'm, I'm a, a split being in that way. I write, I write essays as actively as I write poems. I'm here as a poet uh, today. But it's, it's very hard to say what, uh, when it comes down, will sort of hew to the sort of essay musculature and what will hew to the poet uh, poetry, musculature. Um, that's a mystery. That's a real mm. mystery to me. I, I don't um, understand uh, how those things find their own tracks, but they an encounter, a sensation, a visual image, um, uh, a sort of meditative thought will will ver very quickly find the right musculature. Um, it's it's pretty rare that I treat let's say, an idea in both, in both forms, like I do the poem version and then the essay version. Uh, they're, they're very, very different. Um, and I, I, I want to keep using the word musculature because that's very much what it feels like. Um, I think I can use the word musculature because I really do pay attention to physical sensations mm -hmm. when I'm working. Um, so the way language clicks in in poetry um, by way of uh, shorter gasps, jolts, r s hyper attention to sound um, and sound combinations leads me to want to work shorter. Um, and then extended thought, maybe more argumentation, um, uh, might lead to an essay. But in saying that, I feel like I'm making that up. So. <laughs> 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 you know, the more you talk in some sort of official capacity, the more you can <laughs> convince yourself you really you got it down. Okay. Um, I, I think working as a poet for me is a sort of cross between um, diligence and desire, if I can say it that way. Um, it's it's an it's creating it, the kind of openness you hope for by sitting down to it every day. And sometimes things happen and sometimes nothing happens. But the space that you create by sitting down is a kind of practice of mind that you can walk through a day with so that when you are struck by something, and I, I, I love the phrase, you know, the fur changing the furniture of your mind, um, you have the flexibility, you know, on the subway or whatever to, um, uh, you know, sort of take w where you don't want to be um, and refocus 
uh, either on something you've been working on or on a moment of seeing that's, that's very new and fresh in your present. So the sort of practice of trying to sit down to the work every day allows you to move through a day with heightened sensitivity. Um, 